third okay ionic okay only few people so i hope uh, most of the people knows about the java rest service right <laughs> so we, so today my session is going uh, is about uh, ionic framework with uh, java rest service so we are java developers we develop uh, uh, application side we never work within the front end side right so th this will be the starting point for you guys to kick start with your app development so anybody uh, hands on with the uh, android or ios development or like wish to develop wish to develop right <laughs> okay cool okay so about me so 2008 passed passed out so an university uh, i started career in uh, terminus banking software company so and le later at at present sorry p is missing <laughs> so working in software ag as a engineering specialist so i do contribute netbeans so you can see my t set so i am <laughs> die god <laughs> fan of netbeans <laughs> Yes, you have to contribute them. <laughs> <laughs> so, at the end of ses session, may may maybe in a few time, I can explain you how to contribute in NetBeans as well. So, since uh, I started NetBeans uh, 5.5, so maybe uh, you may hear of what NetBeans are not. So, 5.5, I started uh, learning Java, deploying. Uh, Uh, application server glass with i started learning glass with server jsp so database everything i learned using netbeans so the next one is sorry this slide is missing maybe if please you can have. so my hobby is new technology learning new technologies like now i am going to so ionic framework so the next one is raspberry pi torrent download <laughs> so <laughs> that's why i put uh, strike out marks <laughs> so so it's live so you can check pi.lapkit.in guest to guest you, if you want play around you can play around so so i developed uh, uh, raspberry pi torrent for downloading uh, uh, videos based on uh, torrent file you can send torrent from any word so you can use a mobile to upload or anything it will download to my home raspberry pi <laughs> so basically yeah <laughs> okay so this is the high level i am going to do so what i am i am going to develop uh, api in the cloud so and i am going to consume and i am going to develop a, a very very basic uh, ui uh, in ios and uh, android sdk so i am going to consume the, those rest service that's it everybody cl clear so this is the api market today so i iot market will reach 7 trillion by 2020 and 50 billion devices co connected to internet and each person have at least 6 uh, devices connected to the web <laughs> yes still is exceptional <laughs> yeah, yeah 60 <laughs> so you see all the millions of applications we develop those are wi useless without api right so uh, 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 each devices will consume some apis somewhere api must be run right so this is just a, a highlight i took from colki.com so by the end of uh, 2017 market demand for mobile app and development of services will grow five times faster than now so you can see you can imagine where you know, your company is developing cloud based application recently 
and uh, now the trend will change. So basically, devices, these are the services. So these will consume. So as I said, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to create an app in OpenShift. So basically, it is, uh, we can uh, commit those app via JIT. So they provide a, a separate uh, uh, private JIT for our app applications. So you can uh, code and uh, com commit your changes. It will automatically compile and uh, deploy into the OpenShift. So we are going to test those REST API and finally going to implement this one. So I, I already developed uh, applications and which is hosted as well in this URL. Sorry, it is very uh, not visible in the here, but it will be visible in the YouTube. You can watch later. I will say this day. So today agenda is this. So first of all, I'm going to develop REST service, as I said. So next, deploy in OpenShift. I'm going to show how to create an app application in OpenShift as well. Anybody tried OpenShift here? OK, quite many. Only create or deploy application, everything, right? OK, nice. OK. So this is the one of the new topic I'm going to cover today. So develop mobile app, and I'm going to consume this REST service. OK? No more slides. I'm sorry. So I am using Steve network. Thank you, Steve. I don't know why it is very fast. What's I mean, it didn't only.
No, it is connected but very slow. <coughs> yes. No, okay. First. Thanks, Mani. Okay, I already created two gears, so I am going to create a new one. So, so here I am giving the URL public app. So I'm giving no preference, I'm creating this one. So basically what it will do is I'm creating a Wildfly application server in the uh, OpenShift. So for free uh, register, uh, re register user, we will get uh, three gears, gears. Basically gear means uh, three application server or three uh, app, whatever we want, Python, Jenkins, database more going to be so any three app we can host in the open shift so this will take time quite time so, so because this will create the github repository for our app and the same uh, uh, this will set up a separate uh, uh, instance uh, for this created url so i until so I will wa walk through my code. So it is available in G GitHub. So this is the pe person API REST service. So I have synced here. So this is the person entity objects so sim i simply created a plain person objects name age twitter email that's it so what i did is i, I put XM xml root element this means font size sorry Okay. You want full screen? Huh? It's enough, right? Okay. So this is the person. So this is the object I'm going to expose as a REST service. So it has name, age, few f fields. So what I did is I put XML root element so this is will, this will taken care by uh, xml binding so so i am I, I given here name i annotated uh, element uh, name age and uh, what, whatever get methods i used i annotate here that's it that's our rest uh, this will expose us uh, easily bind whatever JSON, uh, JSON or XML. And this is simply utility class. This will create a default person object. So nothing but I give given my details. So name. So here comes the entity. 
storage bin. This is a singleton annotated in EJP. So this will serve as a only one. So here I initialize the person objects. So I am getting as a person objects here. So this is the person resource. So this is the ro uh, root path I'm giving. And this is uh, annotated as a stateless. So here I annotated and initialized this entity bean, which I showed earlier, this one. So w once I it will available, the, the resource is available, this uh, will be filled with the default objects. This is so as a HTTP get, uh, when you type in the browser, the default uh, uh, accept uh, header will be text slash HTML. So when you type a website, google.com or uh, any whatever.com in the browser, the accept head header will be text slash HTML. So I annotated here. So this method will trigger when we give the endpoint, basically enter. So this method will trigger. So I show you the AI. So when I type here, so this will be respond. So here, I hard coded as a HTML. I simply put two string of the actual entity bean. So it is coming here as a two string. Okay. The next one is, so here I increase the path. So uh, version one person, it's get the it, it, it and it consumes. So consumes refer. We ha have to give the accept header as a application slash JSON. So this will return the simply we, we are calling get person. So this will return as a JSON object. And similarly for set, so here I annotate as a put. So rest service, here I called as a get, and here I initialize as a put. And this will consume both XML and JSON. Whatever the content, you can send a request to update this resource as a XML or JSON. And this is patch, this is a different story. So I'm not going to cover this one, okay? I'm skipping this one. So the, this code is available in GitHub. Uh, you can browse and so, okay? So I'm going to test this app in the... Mm, REST API. I'm going to get so this one application JSON. So you can see this is printing because I I this is basically binded automatically because of the annotations which we set here. So XML annotation. So this is printing as a nice uh, JSON. So this is the raw value. So we are going to use this resource only. And this is a basically put operation. I'm not going to explain this one. Okay. Okay. So it is created. So uh, GitHub clone URL is here. So once uh, I, I have uh, added the application, so choose the application as a uh, Wildfly application, 
and I configure as a Madras jug. So this is the next step. So Wildfly is uh, added, and uh, this is the credential for this Wildfly application server. And this is the uh, for uh, configuring uh, this uh, open shift, you need uh, uh, Ruby installed and the command line utilities of uh, Red Hat. So I installed, I am not going to explain those one, so you can check the b because plenty of uh, uh, blogs and libraries, uh, tutorials are available there. So this is the clone of the git URL, right? So I am going to clone this one. So NetBeans is awesome. <laughs> so, so I'm going to clone. So I'm giving the URL of the git URL. Okay. So clone git URL. So I'm giving clone. So. So either we, we can give us a password or private key. So this once hands on, this will ask for the confirmation. So I give you yes. Something got screwed up. This is the final try. <laughs> no, it, it was VOM. I just changed to COM. Connection issue. Yes. Yes, it is done. Oh, what is the name? Metros Jug, right? So it will create the Maven project. You can see. So here you can add. What you can do is you can check out the GitHub uh, URL which I configure and uh, you can sync the both app and you can do configure and commit this app will be uh, running in your gear so this is the uh, madras jug which i created now and this is the github uh, projects so here what uh, 
I synchronize the git up and the open shift one. Okay. So you can either copy and paste here or merge use git merge pull and push remote pull and push. So I'm using this existing alone. So I am going to show how so I'm going to s uh, change the uh, this resource. I just updated this alone. I committed. Uh, done. Team. Uh, this one I am going to push to the remote server. So, uh, remote push. Here you can see you have to choose either the GitHub account or OpenShift account. Okay. So, uh, I choose GitHub account, uh, Red Hat, uh, OpenShift Cloud. You can see. So I'm pushing my changes to here. So this will change immediately. So I'm master finish. What this commit will do is, basically this commit will stop the application server commit your changes, compile and generate the war file and deploy into the open shift. Okay. So when you do command line, this will clearly tell what's happening in uh, open shift cloud. So now I am using a NetBeans tool, so it will skip out. So now you can see temporary unavailable. So it is restarting. Yes. No, when you commit locally, no, this will. No, I, I am committing to the open shift only. So I am maintaining separate branch. So this is separate. Uh, copy and uh, open shift is separate copy open shift have as in inbuilt uh, git repository for your application so it is restarting you can see This is time order, so skipped out. So you can see, pushing is finished. C come on. Yes. Thanks for your patient. <laughs> so here you can see. So now it's time for uh, test <laughs> Ionic. Thank you. No, I'm not yet completed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> so. 
So now our REST API is uh, uploaded and it is available. The next uh, open shift. So either you can configure your private URL uh, if you by a D, uh, do, a DNA domain name, you can configure there as well. So I am not going to take full session about the I Ionic because uh, it will take one day fully. I am going to just give you a hint what, uh, what is I liked very much in Ionic. So few days back, uh, I was talking to Anki. So he, guide, he explained that uh, cross-platform application will be the fu future. So because everybody developing a lightweight uh, uh, front end, so we, we can use Ionic 2 framework to develop a mobile application. So one, uh, one thing I really admire in Ionic 1 is uh, the uh, light. No, no, just. Uh, so you can see, uh, these are the uh, inbuilt uh, ionic uh, material designed uh, icons. You, 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 you feel like uh, it's not a mobile application. You feel like uh, it's a uh, native application. So they will take care of the, those things. They are developing on top of Cordova. So for. Uh, iOS, they have similar icons, and for Android, similar icon. You can see in iOS native home is like this, and uh, in uh, Android you can see. Wh if you develop uh, this application uh, in na natively separate for iOS and uh, Android, means it will take much time, and your customer will go out. So this is the slide. Uh, Ionic 2 is uh, still beta. They are uh, uh, working together with uh, Anglo JS, uh, Anglo JS two, Anglo two guys to deliver same Ionic two and Anglo two in uh, same release. So this, uh, I feel this might be the uh, future. So you can see there are uh, thousands of app de developing and uh, deploying every day. Imagine every day, thousands of uh, applications is, uh, developing using Ionic. Okay, so this is one of the killing feature. So you no need to worry about uh, icon and uh, look and feel. If you develop uh, uh, Android application, you end up with uh, losing your presence on customization, other than working in your business knowledge. Right. So you, you can check this those resources, re really, really helpful. Still, what they are doing is uh, they are updating uh, based on the latest version. So if configuration or any property or, uh, is changed in the beta version, they are changing the, the, their block as well immediately. So the, their block is alive as per the latest one. Even one of the uh, I uh, Ionic developer uh, itself, uh, he referred this slides, so I'm not going to take full one. So this is the steps I already did. So you ha you need to install uh, la latest Node.js and uh, install Cordova and Ionic Beta. So this will install automatically entire dependency everything for you. And so now what I'm going to show is I'm, I already created because this command will kill you if I execute here. Because it took me last night whole three hours to update because of my broadband connection. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the uh, command to create. Once this is done successfully, you can execute this command to create a blank uh, Ionic app. Okay. 
then later you i show the code you can copy paste and uh, do this command install npm and serve upload i will tell you what is upload why this required once uh, you are seeing the hands on demo you will feel what is upload means So this is the uh, get request, right? So uh, what is the header I am passing? Yes, accept JSON. So this is the parameter I need to configure. So once you create, this is the fo folder structure you will get. So as I said, once you uh, upload this ionic uh, install this will update all the dependency which required for this project automatically so no need to care about this one this is not required so this is the starting point of the application ionic 2 they are using uh, es6 Enough? Huh? So they are using ES6. NetBeans is not supporting ES6, but uh, they are supporting from 8.2. It's in the feature list. So hopefully, uh, all the IDs will support uh, ES6. So this is the la latest uh, Angular uh, 2 syntax. So I showed this uh, URL right. So here you can check and study about the basic syntax. What is app? What is thing? Everything. So I'm going straight away. So here I am importing the uh, native look and feel of the libraries. So this is a simple, simple con constructor. I am re redirecting is a home page. So root page as a home page. So when, when I load the app, the root page is a home page. Whatever, any, any page you can design. But there should be a one root page to serve. So this is the root page. So here I mention as a home page. And here I declare here, home page. So then you can see dot slash uh, pages home home. So here is the dot is refer as a current directory, pages, home, and this will refer this home. So JS is excluded. So this will load. So here I, I, I said the class is I exp, oh sorry. So here I mentioned home page is an export one. That's why we imported here. If it is not men mentioned, you can't uh, f import. So this is the HTTP, which I am going to trigger. So I am uh, importing uh, here as a constructor. So this constructor will, will include here. So this will take taken care by the Ionic framework. So here I am mentioned. So Angular 2 HTTP. Since I said the Angular 2, so here I mention HTTP, headers, request apps, option. At the moment, request option is not required for our request because we are not giving any uh, parameter for the get request, query parameter or anything, only the headers. So this is the main uh, part of our code. You can see. Visible, right? So I am constructing here. I imported headers over there in the initial line. So here I am constructing head. So I am giving the URL, which I 
recently tested here in the advanced rest client so i am passing as a headers here so headers i included here accept application json so here i am binding the uh, rec uh, json so this will convert to json map so this map i am included here import map so that's it i'm just uh, consuming the name email and so our business logic is seeing is believing so here is the main part so this is basically the header part of the mobile so title okay this they they do have their own derivatives so this is the syntax you can see online uh, in the ionic 2 components you can search you you will find these syntax so what i do here is i just added the uh, icon contact email globe just this alone uh, inbuilt ionic framework will uh, convert based on the platform we use Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. So this is the nav bar header header bar, and this is the content. So what what I am doing here is over there we bind to person name, email, Twitter. So once uh, this will be available in the data. The result will be available in the data. So data dot name, data dot email, data dot Twitter. So you can see this is the object one. Name, age, Twitter. So this one we get here. So we will access here data dot name, data dot email, and the data dot Twitter. Okay. So we are uh, assigning this variable, and we are. Yes, I, I will show you. So I am I, I added here. So once you see, you will wonder. So I am going to start this application. <sighs> yes. So what th this is basically gulp task. So this will. Uh, so you can see, this is the uh, iOS view, and this is the Android view. Okay, you can see the uh, icons. How can I press? Oops. Okay. You can see the icon in the iOS and the Android, and same for the uh, iOS here, uh, the reload icon. It's uh, purely based on the native look and feel. So user will feel like uh, he, he will native and he love your uh, application. behavior change like uh, scroll bar yes everything is there because since uh, this is a java meeting so i skipped the those uh, thing because this is will be the kickstart for you maybe you you can uh, use this code and you can add your own samples and you can do whatever you want right yes so okay now you can you you want to feel the uh, difference in the uh, app itself right everybody uh, love to see in their dev devices even uh, i purchase iphone uh, one year back i never hands on with the ios app since i don't have windows uh, uh, sorry i uh, macbook 
So this is the uh, good chance you can uh, test your uh, app in your phone. So what I am going to do is Ionic Framework provide Ionic View app. You can search in your uh, app store Ionic View. Okay, you just install and you create uh, Ionic Framework uh, uh, dot com. You can create your sign up and create uh, your account. Then you simply execute this command. I said earlier, right? This upload. Okay. So you you just put this command. This will ask you the username and password. You just give. It will automatically upload your current app to the store, not store. It their uh, account. You can view the same app in the mobile. Still, you are not believe. So I will show the demo. Phone gap. You can use mic, Kanki. Anybody is speaking, please use mic. Please so repeat. I think because uh, I'm familiar with PhoneGap, which okay. is also uses uh, uh, Cordova. So when I developed some applications using PhoneGap, the biggest pain, pain point that I faced was the front-end development. They don't even provide any libraries. But I think I can able to see that these people providing a lot of libraries, uh, some reusable components for you to develop your app. Yes. Right? We get the scene is code over. OK. Uh, Steve, can you please? Uh, so yeah. this is the iOS. I installed uh, Ionic View. I just now I uploaded the app, right? You please hold and do what I say, OK? Everybody see the screen, right? Wait. Yes, please uh, open the uh, person. Yes, view app. So this will uh, it it will show the absence like uh, view or sync or delete. You can either if you change the code you upload it. If you want latest one, you can sync. So this will download the whatever images, files, or anything record. It will download. OK. So now this is render. You can see the values, right? Right? So now I am going to change. So I am going to update this value. I'm sorry, Tam. 
Yes, I am going to update uh, uh, the value. Okay, so damn. Right, I will put the post request. Yes, now you please reload. Yeah? Right. Tam, 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 tam. Okay. You, ca you can see the, now you can see the difference between Android and the iOS. So I have the two apps. So it is uh, already in sync, so I'm going to use the view. So it is loaded. You can see the icon differences, right? Wait. So this is the demo. Any question? That's it. Okay. So any question you can uh, always uh, ping me.